what I'd like to say is we have a waiting list of people that want jobs at Chick-fil-A. I would like to say that they're always on time, and I would like to say that they never, ever call in sick, and later that night you see them at the movie theater or at the fair. We fish in the same cesspool of employees that everybody else does, and that's just how it is. And so, and um, that's, that's the reality of it. I was talking to my managers uh, a couple days ago about some hiring, because we are doing some hiring right now. And I said, um, let's come up with some numbers. And so we did the numbers and said, if we had 100 applications that came into our restaurant, only 40% of them will get called for a job interview. And a lot of it is because um, we asked three questions. Where, what, and why? That's the big questions we ask when we're recruiting. Where are, we, where are you recruiting or where are we recruiting to? What are you looking for in your people? And why are you keeping them? When, when we're looking for people, our managers, um, they kind of know exactly what we're looking for. And what, what I've seen before, and I've heard this from other people, is they're looking for a certain individual, and what they end up doing is they will force fit somebody into that position. They'll say, well, this is the kind of person we want, but yet, you know, here's some flaws, but we really need somebody, so we're going to go ahead and put them in there. Um, there's other places that they just say, well, do you, does your heart beat? You know, here, blow on this glass. Um, oh, yeah, it fogs up. All right, you're hired. Um, that's, that's not what we do. We're very specific about do they fit. Be as specific as you can. And then be rigid on it. Now, some things you'll find, especially when it comes to marketing, I'm very flexible. But when it comes to hiring, I'm not. It's very rigid. You know, if they don't fit this mold, this, this won't work because our guests and our customers are expecting a certain thing. Again, real performance standards are based on not the behaviors that you expect, but rather the behaviors that we accept. We're all of a sudden introducing a whole new vocabulary. We're wanting them to say my pleasure. We're wanting them to introduce people. And sometimes they get it botched up. We had a girl named Joanne that worked for us, uh, and she had worked for us. We were open for a couple months, and she was still fairly new and trying to get the, get the swing of things. And she said, um, uh, the person came up and she gave him total, your total is, is um, 1054 and Sarah will be happy to pleasure you at the window. <laughs> and, uh, and at the time, the back of our house, uh, we had speakers so everyone in the kitchen heard it. <laughs> and so, so I walked into the kitchen and there was no one in the kitchen and everybody is in the drive through because they all wanted to see what this guy was, you know, when these guys were coming up. And so when they came up, they were coming up very slowly and they were kind of leaning out like, what's going to happen when I get to the window? And so, um, so, of course, we never let her live that down. Um, but there is a lot of verbiage and stuff, new verbiage that were out there, and it gets confusing. But, that, that's, but that's what our goal is. And yes, even to say my pleasure, we actually have systems in place to go, go through and recheck um, uh, twice a day. My management will go through the front line, they'll take an order, they'll get the food, they'll tempt the food, they'll go through the drive-thru, they'll get in their car, they'll go through, and I even tell them, you know, sometimes pawn it off on our hostesses or if, you have a, if one of your friends are here or something, I'll let them go through because we want to make sure that our people are saying my pleasure and that, they're, uh, that the temperature of the food is right and all those things are, are correct. After about between two and four weeks, we will, we will step back and say, okay, now that you have some friends here, now that you've, you're used to all the beeping that's going on in the, in the back with all the, um, the different fryers and everything, uh, now that all that's kind of settled down, let's talk. And for some people, that's the time when we go ahead and let them go. Because we've worked with them for anywhere from two to four weeks and they're not smiling out front. And John Maxwell talks about when, um, on a scale of one to 10, if you have somebody that is a four in customer service, you can work with them and you can work with them and the best you're gonna get is a six. You know, sixes won't do at my store. And so if that's the case, you know what? A six might do great at the movie theater or, or at um, someplace else, but it won't work for us. And not, we're not trying to be mean about it because we wanna go ahead and, and um, I don't wanna say cut our losses, but we wanna go ahead and give them the opportunity to go do something that they're gonna be um, happier at. Because you know what? If they're, only a, if they're a six, then they're probably an eight at something else or a nine at something else. And so Chick-fil-A is just not a good fit for them. As I've matured as a leader, I found a lot of my team members, they were struggling with things. Uh, they were struggling with their home life. They were struggling with, their, um, with school, with um, how they feel about their self-image, about um, you know, how are they going to pay for things. And they see me as a business owner who's uh, clearly an established business owner, and they may not see me a whole lot. I know that a lot of them probably think I go and golf, but I don't golf at all. 
Um, but it's because I have, I have two locations. Um, so I'm, I'm between the two stores. I have a licensed location at Oral Roberts and in Wichita State. I do a lot of um, public speaking. I'm on the innovations team at the home office. I'm the guy that helps come up with the crazy ideas. And so I wrote this book because I wanted them to know um, what I went through when I was growing up. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of uh, details on it, but you know, when I was growing up, um, you know, I had, my mom was an alcoholic and we had a lot of struggles in the family. I had scoliosis, so I had to wear a back brace in high school. I actually graduated from Union High School right down the street from where I live. And, I, and when I went to Oral Roberts University, I struggled. I had to work four jobs in order to go to school. And so, yes, I know what a lot of these kids are going through. There was times when I was, um, when I was given plasma when I had um, Eastland Mall and I was making no money, and my wife and I were trying to buy things for each other for Christmas, so we went and gave plasma, and it was real embarrassing. To, and they say, where's your employer? Oh, I own Chick-fil-A. <laughs> No, you don't. Yes, I do. I promise I do. <laughs> smell me. Smell. I smell like peanut oil. Um, and, uh, and, but that's how it was. Now, it's not the same anymore, but the, the employees don't see that. So I wrote this book mainly for them. They're never going to be trained completely, but it is one of those that there's a certain level that we expect. And if they're at that level, then that's fine. But we're always going to be giving them other opportunities to learn, um, whether it's um, uh, videos or training or, uh, or books. I mean, I have a plethora of books at my, uh, at my store that I encourage them to, to be reading and learning.